This episode is brought to you by Simply by Frito-Lay. These days, you have a lot going on. But now, thanks to Simply by Frito-Lay, you have one less thing to worry about. So kick back and enjoy your favorite Frito-Lay snacks with ingredients to feel good about, like Simply Blue Corn Tostitos, Sea Salted Ruffles, and even White Cheddar Cheetos Puffs, all made with no artificial colors or flavors. Enjoy what you love and look for Simply Brand snacks online or at a store near you. This episode is brought to you by Philips One by Sonicare. One up your brushing with Philips One. It's a big step up from your manual toothbrush with both rechargeable and battery powered versions so you can choose the one that best fits your life. Learn more at philips.com slash one. That's P-H-I-L-I-P-S dot com slash O-N-E. I'm Matt Bronger. This might help. I am not a doctor. This might help. I'm not a professional. Let's have fun. This honestly is a good time. I'm Matt Bronger. This might help. The podcast. Hey, Mighties. Welcome back to This Might Help with Matt Bronger. I don't know what number this is, uh, but one thing I do know is that this podcast is meant for fun. If you actually need clinical help, I ain't the guy. And neither are my guests, probably. They're too fun for that. But uh, there's no shame in getting help. But like the title of the show says, this might help. So we'll see. Let's have fun while we do it. I have uh, um, one of my favorite comics on and a good guy uh, uh, has, I, I think, 78 podcasts now. Uh, I think, no, <laughs> a couple, <laughs> but they're all good. He stays busy. He's a, he's a great uh, uh, comedian, but also, also um, family man and husband, which is cool. And also, one thing this guy and I have in common is that we look totally different with or without beards. Dan Cummings. <laughs> Yes, no? Matt. That's uh, oh my god. The I have to comment on the with or without beards things. I yeah. had a mustache for like six months last year, and my uh-huh. kids, my kids thought it'd be funny. Well, I think my son thought it'd be funny. My fifteen-year-old son Kyler, thirteen-year-old daughter Monroe, and then <laughs> when I went home and showed my daughter, she made so much fun of me, and she was just like she would she didn't know how to re- react like if she should laugh or cry and just like like kind of like anger and then my wife cry laughed um i was shocked how different i looked i thought i had way more chin under here i pictured this very manly george clooney like my mind rebuilt my chin i'm like oh yeah it's yeah. super wide and <laughs> masculine and i'm like no no i have my mom's chin i have the chin of a 65 year old woman hiding <laughs> under this beard i was like no <laughs> I feel like I remember you having a pretty strong jaw because I I do not. Um, no, I, I think we we have similar a, a similar facial shape. I think we no, do. No, I don't think I, I I well I must not have. I I thought I had a a stronger jaw, but no, uh, the the mirror would say absolutely not. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then I'm so glad we get to. Uh, Get to hang because I've been a fan of yours from afar. We've met in passing, uh, mm-hmm. passing a few times, but never really got to to chat. I feel bad when I was when I was in L.A. You talked about family. Yeah, um, L- L- L.A. was good for me, but I did not. I was not hanging out like almost at all. I was either on the road, right, or right. when I was home, I had you know like I had just been divorced, and then b- uh-huh. but my ex and I very amicable as far cool. as the kids. I'm remarried now. Awesome stepmom, my wife Lindsay, mm-hmm. but uh. The kids were down at least a week a month. And so I just, I was either on the road or when I was in LA, I was just home with my kids. And I felt like the, uh, just this terrible uh, comic where I, I, sometimes I would get invited for shows early on. And I felt like people thought I was being a, a dick or something when I would pass, but I just had this family stuff. I don't know. It, it was a tricky balance for me. It was poor timing for me, That's for me to be there. It's tough because I feel like people would understand much more now, whereas there was a time, you know, mm. like, I, I, the stereotype right. I'm trying to stay away from is like the, the some a lot of the comedians who were older than us were kind yeah. of bags and didn't take care of their families <laughs> and like you know like, but it is well, I mean, there's a reason there's a lot of that we felt that way. Those guys you meet on the road that'd be like, yeah, I got kids, uh, whatever. You want another shot? Yeah. You're like, whoa, hey man, are you you know like. <laughs> We were met. We opened for those guys, and like yes, um, and it, and it was it was it, that was a, that was a thing. So it's like 
I think if those guys had a show in LA and they they'd be like, right. fucking Dan thinks he's too good for us. But it's like, no, he's just trying to raise a a, a good, uh, hardworking, uh, loving <laughs> human being. I don't know, you know. Right, right. Uh, so, <laughs> but yeah, and but having I, a family, I, I, it- I think. You know, in that case, I would say like it, I would lean on you know the old uh, uh, saying of like, you know, no one was saying that. People basically only think about themselves. So when that person right, when you couldn't exactly, come to the show yeah. and they were just like, You're "Well, right. cool, man. All right. Well, you know, yep. I'm gonna go try to." Fuck this chick or whatever, you know. <laughs> no, you're right. My wife, my wife uh, gets on me about that all the time. Where it's like I am, uh, I'm an overly apologetic person. I don't even it's just something in my family. I don't know if it's like yep. a family, and it's same. I'm annoyed by. Okay, same. Yeah, I'm annoyed by myself. Like I hear myself doing it, <laughs> and then and then sickly, my instinct is to apologize for being overly apologetic. And I'm just like, stop. Right. But, sure. But I but I would uh, build these scenes up in my head where. I've uh, said no to somebody and then they go talk to five other people. And they're like, what a piece of shit. Yeah. He thinks he's too good. And then I'm like, no guys, I, I do want to. And they're like, no, fuck you. Now you're and dead to us. The yeah. person who really is getting that felt about them never worries about that shit. And uh, they have no idea in my experience that people are like, yeah. that dude's the fucking worst. You know, it's. Wouldn't it's it be nice to be that oblivious? Amazing. And just so if, you could, if you could just di- dial empathy and concern, like dial them back a little bit, like the true sociopath, not like the cartoonish, like Christian okay. Bale, American Psycho, but just sure. like the corporate climber who is able to step on as many people yes. as they need to because they, they they're not even really aware they're stepping on people. Right. They don't. They just don't think about anybody but me. I'm I, doing great. Me, me, me. Yeah. I had, I had an agent once who was notoriously terrible that way, and. uh <laughs> I'm not even going to say what their sex was, so people don't narrow this down or sure, anything. Sure, sure. But, but but I remember, um, you know, my wife works on the other side of the business. She used to be my manager. Yeah, and, and yeah. So so uh, uh, that person came up in conversation, and um, my my wife mentioned about like just talking about where different people go, their kids go to daycare or something like that, and she mentioned, oh, that person and this person and this person, their kids, and the executive they were talking to, where they were like. That person has children. Are you what? <laughs> they, 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 they were like, this person is such a fucking like awful person that wow. that, that this this person went wait like Whoa. they couldn't. Have, it, it'd be like it'd be like um, if you found out that someone who uh, Jesus would be a, t- a terrible thing, but not like a mass shooter, but like something you could like. I'm trying to think of something. Someone. That, Someone goes out and he, he's like a professional poisoner, but like just really take right. it. Like something you're just like, wait, how can you? No, sure. but you don't. Can you not reconcile that? I what, think, you're, what you're oh. doing to the world by treating yeah. people like garbage is making it a bad world for your kids eventually? Can't, can't you see that? <laughs> right, your selfishness. That Yeah, I'm amazed. I mean, I think like sociopaths, and there's no like stats on this that I'm aware of, but I bet they have kids as much as anybody else but sure. their motivation and the way they see them, it's like, these aren't these other entities I care about in and of like, right. I, I don't care for their, what they want. They're an extension of me. Yes. They are, you know, it's like having a cool car. That's it's a like, good I got point. this cool car and I got these cool kids that are going to shut the fuck up. You know, like <laughs> just, they have to act a certain way. And you know, yeah, yeah. This, this uh, per- good point. This person is not adopting foster kids. <laughs> no, you know, no. at risk youth, they're not doing anything like that. That's like, wow, that's true parenting. That's really incredible. Because yeah, you, you look at this kid, and you don't see any of yourself. You don't have that chemical bond that we yeah. all have with our kids. You know, or like, ah, uh, right. I, I have this bond. Like, I, I didn't realize that supposedly the first kid, uh, and this didn't yeah. happen for mine, but comes out looking like the father. So. Oh, the is that father. a thing? Like they, they tend to look like the dad. Oh, because the father uh, is, is, is like... around. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Back mm-hmm. to our monkey days. Mm-hmm. Monkey days. Yeah. The father. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that makes that that makes that makes sense. Uh, and you yeah. and you have a do you have a daughter? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. one daughter. That's right. Yeah, I know you have one kid. Uh, yeah, yeah. I just have the have the two, and they are. <laughs> I, I'm amazed. Like the longer I've had kids, it is so sad when you know to go back to what we were just talking about. When you get those people that don't really see their kids uh, as 
as their own independent entities who will probably outlive them and you know need to have their have their own wants and desires and all that they just yeah. see them as like uh something to live vicariously through or right. this uh extension of their status or whatever sure it's just such a crazy thing like um i see that like i remember when i it's pretty common on some level when my son was into soccer we would go to these little soccer practices which i thought was weird just to be going to practice anyway it's like a thing where you watch sure. their practice now and yeah. but so many of the other parents it's like i, I kept thinking I'm like the kids does that kid even want to play soccer <laughs> you clearly want to play soccer like you clearly this is your life and you live sure. for for going to these moments yeah. where i've never had that with my kids i'm like and i tell my kids all the time i'm like not in a mean way but i don't actually give a shit what you do like yeah. I, I want you do what you do, whatever you're going to find that is for yourself. Don't do it for me. Don't do it for mm -hmm. your mom. Don't do yes. it for anybody. Ugh, it's such a Why weird thing. I see it in my, my family. Oh, would you, now did you, uh, were your parents being like, you know, you have to be this to you or? You know, my mom actually super weird that way. Uh, uh -huh. <laughs> I, I love my mom, but my mom is just kind of a weird person. But like <laughs> she uh, had a very fixed vision for my future okay. and it was a uh, lawyer or doctor because we, we and we grew up in this tiny little town in idaho where no one did those things no one in my family had, did, had uh -oh. done those things clearly at some point she became like fixated on like those are the two most uh respectable things you can do and yeah. uh and she i did well in school or whatever and so she started to project early on i was gonna do one of these two things she didn't let go of that until wow. i was probably not joking 35 years old Wow. Like she would check in. I'm I'm more than 10 years into comedy. And she's like, well, you know, I mean, you can always go back to law school. You can do I'm like, <laughs> mom. I, I never wanted to go to law school. Yeah. And really. she's like, well, you used to want to be a lawyer. What? When I was eight and I and I picked 15 different things in one year. And that was one of the things I said. Yeah. And I certainly said that to make you love me. You know what I mean? Like is it, you do things when you're a kid like that. Yeah. Like, well, am I good? Do you like me? I hope you won't yeah. take me out, you know? Right. It's instinctual, you know? It's like it's like a, how dogs are like emotionally intelligent and they're like, they want to do what you want to do, you know, to oh, be part totally. of the pack. You're, like, you're, kids you're, are like that. If your dad has nothing on but Green Bay Packers shit, you're not going to come around with a Bears jacket. You know what though? I like, like, Fuck yeah. what you like, like you know, you're gonna. <laughs> yeah, not until you're a teenager, and then you just fucking hate everything they do. But yeah, yeah. absolutely. When you're growing yeah. up, you just like what? I, I can sense that mom wants this. Yeah, and then I, and then I've seen that on the uh, with some family members with my own kids, and I and I'm very uh, transparent with the kids and very yeah. sometimes I don't want to say brutally honest, but very honest. And it's I good. just don't want them. Yeah, and I think it is good for them to to hear honesty, and I'll just be like, hey, you're you know, grandma over here or whatever, or grandma like this is what they're trying to do and this is why it's not the best yeah uh, they mean they might not be aware of it they love you know that they love you all that oh, stuff cool. but you're actually not going to break their heart if you don't play piano you're actually not mm -hmm. going to you know crush them if you don't want to do basketball like yeah that they shouldn't put that on you yeah yeah i mean i, I definitely if she's like i just i don't like sports i'm not going to be like well let's at least do soccer because right, right. It's like, well, find some other way to be active. What do you do? You like hiking? Yeah. You know, it's we're gonna do something physical, some kind of physical activity. But it's it's if you don't, I she does not have that dad that's like a sports nut, and I'm also not gonna be like, ooh, we gotta watch this piece of performance art, right? You know, like the exact opposite of sports or whatever. I'm not gonna do that either. It's kind of yeah. Like, Will Will Smith was it? There's this there's this documentary. Uh, it's I think it's on Apple uh, Plus or whatever, and it's just sure. called um, uh, uh, it's just called Dads. And um, oh, that's cool. I didn't know about that. They interview, you know, everybody from like Will Smith to Patton Oswalt uh, to um, got it. Like the list goes, up, you know, all pr pretty famous people. But Will Smith at the end nails it. He's like, he's like, because they say, what is what like. Like, what is a dad? And they all kind of yeah. like, shit. Well, uh, a person who, and then Will Smith at the end goes, I think a dad is a gardener. Your job is just to garden as well as you can and water and feed and uh, do I like that. plant, but you don't know what you're getting. You can't sit right. there and go, tomatoes. You don't know. You don't yeah. know. And I'm just like, yeah, that's exactly, I'm just excited to find out who this person is. 
you know? Exactly. That's the way I look at it. It, it is so exciting, just the mystery of it. And like, yeah, who are they? My my wife and I, Lindsay and I talk about that with the kids. Like, it's so exciting to see who they're becoming. Like right now yeah. at their ages, they're becoming more of their own identities. And it's, it is so cool. Like, like uh, my son could not be more different than me in so many ways. And I love it. Yeah. Uh, like, it's funny. It's like when I was his age, I was very like angry youth, you know, juvenile oh. delinquent. And, and like, and even now it's like, uh, you know, I got like the tattoos, I like metal, uh, these different things. Uh, sure, sure. My son, my son, my son, Kyler, uh, it's Irish folk music and Norwegian romantic classical music. Uh, you know, I liked, I liked sports a little bit growing up. He is a uh, classical piano. He doesn't care about modern music. Um, wow. I had no interest in politics. He wants to be a politician. That's all he talks about is politics. Wow. And it just, I'm just like, but I, and I love it. I'm like, where the hell did you come from? And, that's and cool. this is, and this is great. Yeah. This is fun. Really awesome. That's awesome. And I feel like that's the cool thing about this modern era. We talk about how the darkness of the internet so much, but it's like, you can really yeah. find the stuff you like. And I'm not talking about what you're into in terms of porn. I mean, you can find things that are right. you know, musical avenues and artistic avenues yep. and political avenues. You know, that's, and that's, I think it, it does take a kind of probably strong hand, I'd imagine, as a parent. But at the same yeah. time, you kind of trust your kid. I, you know? Yeah, and I think it goes back to transparency too. You know, it's like oh, we yeah. talk, we're pretty open with the kids about sex and porn and all that stuff too. Yeah. I mean, I, I, uh, I think part of it is they maybe natural kind of pushing away from their parents. It's like I've done so many so many filthy bits over the years that yeah. I've taken the coolest out of it. They're just like, yeah, that's, yeah. Oh, porn. Yeah, my dad's talked about that. Boring. You know, hopefully there's 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 some of that. But but we, we just talk about it like not in preachy moralist ways, which I don't think ever do anybody any good. No, but in this they, very practical thing of yeah, like here's what porn is. Here's yeah. here's the behind the scenes. The, here's how it can be okay here's how it can be very damaging all this all the stuff the preachy moralist thing it's just like boy way to make your kid excited about it you know it's yep. like oh that's something i don't get yep. to have i want it right now you know it's amazing how many people miss that i i i lived next to the quintessential uh you know pastor's kids growing up for a while in, uh, oh, yeah. in idaho and it was textbook it was like the stereotypical uh, very like fire and brimstone childhood and very like you don't get to do anything and everything is sinful. Everything is terrible. Uh, you know, homeschooled most of the time because so many sinful kids around, blah, blah, blah. And when those kids got out of school, almost all of them went batshit crazy and like hard on drugs and everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like drug addict, pregnant. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Truly. Yeah. Because it is. Like, and, uh, yeah, gonna, that's a story that just keeps being repeated. When, when, you yeah. know, I, I, I really get a kick out of it when I find there's a, there's a kid. Well, he's not a kid now. He's maybe he's almost twenty now, but lives next door. He's the most polite teenager I've ever met in my life. And I joke with him like I, uh, I love looking at like the neighborhood kids with, and only yeah. my wife can hear me and be like, "There's this kid across the street who's a teenager," and I'll be like, I "Wonder if you want, should I go talk to him about girls." I should go talk to him. Like, and, he's really <laughs> and it's just, I only say that because it's like, you know, that's the last thing this kid wants. What's up, bros? Yeah, yeah. You know? And, <laughs> but like this kid next door to me, I'll, I'll joke to his face and be like, uh, I was like, so what, what are you going to go get drunk in the park this weekend and stuff? You know, party? And he's like, Shh, no, that's my friends. You know? <laughs> it's like, he's that's, laughing. That's awesome. He knows it's stupid yeah. already. He knows it's dumb. <sighs> He's like, this isn't even that right. fun, man. You know, it's so funny. I just get such a kick at it. Because, like, when I was in high school, I was like, oh, hell yeah. Oh, how many yeah. 40s did yeah. we get for three guys? Oh, yeah. Nine? You know, like, just, what are you doing? <laughs> Stop. And, and I think sometimes parents will try to, like, hide that stuff from yeah. their kids, like those stories, because they don't want their kids to emulate them. It's like, yeah, but you're also missing this chance to teach them valuable lessons. Yeah. Where, you know, like, I've shared, because I was a maniac for a couple of years when I was younger and I uh -huh. love my kids reactions to it because we've taught them to I think and some of it's them too but taught them to be pretty logical yeah and they're just they're they're not impressed and I love that they're not impressed they're just like okay. why would you do that and I'm like because I was a fucking idiot and they're like yeah, yeah. <laughs> But let, yeah. let them learn from your mistakes, you know? And exactly. Many people... like, and you can, you can, yeah. you can jump, you can evil can evil right over that shit, kids. Like you, you can learn from yep. me and just not do it. Just not do it. Right. And, you know, do it at an age where you're supposed to, you know, and, and do it in moderation. Exactly. 
and it's yep. it's more fun that way anyway you know like oh yeah yeah, yeah absolutely that's why i tell them too it's like but if you're yeah you know, and we're open that way we're like if you're gonna do it talk to me because yeah. i can give you you know pointers to help keep you alive please let me uh -huh. at least help keep you alive you yeah. <laughs> like, yeah yeah oh man that's good those are those, those are going to be crazy days i do i like the thing i was just before, before we get to calls the thing i wanted to uh mention that was funny to me like had your mother really wanted you to be a lawyer and my parents are teachers yeah. and they okay. were always like you know oh you should you know like you'd be great and stuff and it's like yeah but i know how hard you work and how how little uh people help you so you know like like <laughs> so i i was always into the arts and, and like acting and, and stuff and i got into stand up and yeah but now it, it's funny because now there are people who and this is going to sound super fucked up and dark but the people that are that that and you probably get this see us and go wow you can make a living at it like a lawyer or a doctor and you're kind of like no no not really you know it's, it's <laughs> i mean you can but if you, yeah I, I will say this if you go to law school or medical school and you have an aptitude for it and you just put in the time you're going to be a lawyer or a doctor right. say that you'll make a living as a stand-up eventually ever i really can't but yeah there's a good yeah. chance if you've got this aptitude but it, you know you know how it is when you're first starting out there are those people that like god damn this is the nicest person but you want to pull them aside and go has anyone ever said to you wow you're funny like ever has right. anyone ever said that to you or is this just right something right you know? i know i know i and i'm not an I, arbiter i I'm, I'm sure there are people right. like that who still got there and they still you know i don't know I don't know, but it's just no. I'm I'm not the kind of person that's like, oh yeah, man, just fucking go for it. And it's gonna work out. Like like some weird no. like you know vapid motivational speaker where it's like, no, you just gotta you just gotta follow your dreams. And if you follow them hard enough and you read the secret enough times, it'll all just happen. It's like <laughs> no, I know a lot of really funny people who started doing it around the same time that I started doing it, and it never worked out. You know, it's like it's a fucking brutal business. It's <laughs> brutal. Know, it's like yeah. yeah. And like, just why not just do something else, but be funny and make people happy. Like, right. I, mm -hmm. I maintain the funniest people are not comedians. I mean, I, I like, like a lot of the times I, one of the most entertaining things I ever saw was I was in uh, uh, New Orleans um, with yeah. friends at a piano bar and the piano player was uh, gay and very drunk. And someone put yeah. in a request for Piano Man by Billy Joel uh -huh. and he shredded the song. Like he sang it, <laughs> but he changed yeah. all the lyrics and yeah. was just the meanest bastard. And I was crying. It was like, I, I couldn't get, yeah. I, couldn't, I was like, I was like, if I get off my chair right now, I'll fall down because this is the funniest <laughs> thing I've ever seen. Cause you're, cause you're watching a man snap and he's yes. like, yes, he's so, Train he's record. so done. He's got that song requested <laughs> who knows how many times. Oh yeah, from, uh, from 10, tourists. 20, 30 times a night at least. Yeah. He probably didn't think he was working. I got a phone call and he was drinking with friends and he's already hammered and he just like, right. fuck it. And showed up and just saying, oh. So like, really, I, I like that, that that we'll never get past that bar. You know, like I could destroy. <laughs> and I'm still like, oh, I'll never be as funny as that guy. <laughs> I, I, I remember thinking, uh, yeah, my moment of that was, uh, it was a Letterman thing a long time ago, some interview with him. And he was talking about, uh, how all the bits, you know, the, this team of writers they'd had for all these years, and, you know, he worked so hard to kind of perfect this monologue craft and blah, blah, blah. And the funniest thing that ever happened on the show was when somebody, some animal trainer, maybe Jack Han or somebody brought a monkey and the monkey escaped. And just like the monkey went up on somebody's head. And he's like, like the crowd had never laughed harder than just seeing a monkey just do what a monkey does and just climb on someone. And it's like, yeah, that's, <laughs> it's, yeah, stand up is, for people who really understand, it's so humbling where it's like we yeah. could spend the rest of our lives yep. just honing these fucking intricate stories that like weave into these themes and all dovetails into this big ending. And yeah. the fucking monkey, still funnier, still, still gonna get funnier. more laughs. Uh, uh, America's funniest home videos montage of people falling down carpeted stairs. Like, right. yep. not, just you cannot, you can't top it. They're carpeted yeah. stairs. The, the people are not getting horribly injured, but God, they right. look so funny. The look of abject terror on their faces. Yeah. Old people, children, everyone in between falling on those stairs. Yep. Like a minute and a half long and you all but God. kill yourself. So I, it is, it is crazy how like we just can't get beyond that. Yeah. No, there's, there's some, uh, oh, it's like a 
dang it, not roast beef, French French dip. There we go, French dip sandwich place here in Coeur d'Alene. And okay. that's like all they serve. And they have some TV on. And I can't even remember what the channel is. It's I don't I don't I don't watch a lot of TV actually, but it's just all it is is fail clips. It's just never ending like <laughs> YouTube fails. And I was I just felt like an idiot. Like like I was laughing to the point that my wife Lindsay was embarrassed and told me like we're not we're not alone. Quiet like too much. And all it was was toddlers and dogs just like falling off falling on things like not to the point where they got really hurt but just no. like ridiculous falls and accidents and i was like i had tears in my eyes so good it's so good yeah and then and then i'll and then i'll watch some brilliant stand-up piece and have a reaction of like that nah, was good it was good really smart, smart. loved it it's smart yeah. it's good that's yeah. clever mm. <laughs> yeah. wow. I'm, I'm laughed out from that toddler who uh, uh took a laundry basket down uh, ah, exactly high, but, yeah <laughs> So I always ask people on the show, do you like, do you get asked? I feel like you, you kind of, you made your own road in a very cool way. That's what I think oh, is you know, nice. one thing that's really awesome. You really have, um, without being too beholden to, um, to let's just say like fans that might, I don't know if you have a Patreon or whatever, but like sometimes there are people yeah. that are so divisive that if they oh. do anything, if they do like a movie or something like that, the movie gets, they, they, they'll, these guys will flood the message boards and ruin, you know, so it's just like, wait, right. why the heck do I have this kind of fans? Um, nice. But like you, you know, I've, I've had people go like, oh, you know, Dan Cummins, I love that guy. You know, like these are all. Oh, that's nice. Know. Yeah. And, 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 but do you, so do you, that said long, long uh, way to, to ask, but do you get asked advice? I ask everybody on the show. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and, you know, try to give the the best advice we can just advice about like how did you like entrepreneurial advice now now that this stuff oh. is the podcast we've done have kind of worked you know we get a lot of people uh small business kind of not like you know like hey how do i sell more pizza slices like i don't fucking know but like right. but just you know how do you take those steps to yes. you know how do you market those kind of things and definitely yeah. definitely like how do you podcast you know how do you get into stand up and then and then before stand up it was very brief but I did between college and stand up worked at a, at a residential treatment center and I oh. technically was a counselor. So oh, for, right. it, I did, I only had a bachelor's degree, so it wasn't like this crazy thing, but it was, it was um, family mediation. It was essentially teens oh. run away. They get picked up, they get brought to the treatment center. Family has to come in for mandated by the state X number of sessions before going back into the home. And, and essentially, it was a very focused kind of counseling where it was just uh, find out what's going on communication wise in the household, what people are angry about, and just trying to teach families like better communication tools, I guess, cool. to yeah, reduce the conflict. Yeah. Oh my God. Okay. Well, then you're, you're, you're a perfect guest. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> um, all right. I haven't heard any of the calls. I never do. Okay. So just Renee yeah. is, is the only one. So uh, if you're ready, we'll, we'll roll the first call. Yeah, and, and before we, the the last, I just listened to the episode, oh, and I feel I things will not stick in my brain. The guy who wrote the history of stand-up comedy, you Wayne just, Fetterman. he's a writer, he was, yes, Wayne Fetterman, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I was blown away with the two, your, both of your knowledge of stand-up comedy. Oh, right. That was very, that was very impressive. Uh, Thanks, so man. I just, I wanted to say that, I'm like, man, you, you are a student of the game. That was cool to like, hear you guys riff about early stand-up years and yeah. whenever he brought up carson whatever it was you were like actually da, 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 da. yeah it was well, cool yeah. It, it, because it not only because we do it but because uh i just love i love weird useless knowledge i love weird you know like yeah me too me too there's a there's a story where like uh uh groucho marx was on a plane and like the thing this this guy was talking about like groucho marx never cursed at anyone and he just he just was like huh. a very genteel nice guy and yeah. but like never he you'd never see him flip out on anyone and huh. um and or any like ever and uh uh like i love this as a as a, a person who likes weird history and a person who uh who, who loves comedy he was on a plane yeah for something yeah. like they were grounded for something like six hours something insane uh, and the plane finally took off and they went yeah and landed this is when he was old and they they okay. get off they get off the plane and everyone on the plane is just fried like I just want to go home and there's an old lady and she sees him and she goes are you Groucho Marx and he goes well yes I am and she goes well you weren't funny on the plane and he goes go fuck yourself <laughs> and I love that story <laughs> I love that story because it's just like you can't 
it, you know, you can't expect everything. You had like, like entertain me. What oh do I know? Oh my God. From? You know? Yeah. So it's like, but I would want to know that story even if I wasn't a comedian, but I relate to that story <laughs> as a comedian. Yeah. My, my wife prefaces people now. She, she's, she goes like, like when people are excited to meet me, yeah. she's like, little heads up, not funny. Like she's, she's like, not going to be, cause like I'm more sullen at home. I'm not sullen. I don't want to use, but I, I'm uh, like when her and I are out, she tends to carry the conversation more than I sure. do. If, if we get into like a conversation of something like uh, obscure and weird that I have knowledge of, I'll jump in and maybe get excited. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. but I'm not like, yeah, probably like you. It's like, I'm definitely not the clown. I'm definitely not. You're not like, on. Bah, bah, let's, come on, let's, let's go. Uh -uh. Yeah. That's the worst. That's the worst. And I never was. I never was when I was younger. Yeah, I never had that. I was, ne I was never the funniest. Mm. I was never the kid in class, even in a small class, making the most people laugh. Okay. I just, I had, a, I had a weird sense of humor that would make my friends laugh. Uh -huh. But yeah, that is, that is such a misconception about comics in general. Like, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, most, most of my favorite comics that I've met, like, yeah, conversationally, it's like, no, they're just normal people that they're more curious. They're more passionate maybe about certain things, Sure. more yeah. intense in certain conversational ways, but not like funny guy at the office. <laughs> hey, they're not, hey, no, yeah. yeah. They're not going to put on a show. Yeah. No. Exactly. Okay. So let's roll the first call. Yes. Yes. <sighs> okay. Um, my name's Alex, and I'm probably making a mistake. Um, no. You both are comedians. I've been told, no, I'm just kidding. Big fans of both of you. Um, see, I'm nervous on a call. That's the issue. Okay, so, sorry. Um, okay, man. I want to do stand up. I don't know if I want to do it for a career, but I know I want to at least do it just to do it for the hell of it, for the fun of it, because I love comedy. And because I I, I know, I, and I do love doing it, but um, not every show, but every now and then, I do get like crippling stage fright, like, like, like hands will shake, legs will shake, voice will shake. Sure. And... I uh, I know it's supposed to go away eventually, right? But like, is there anything I can do now to make it easier? Um, just get it, just just being on stage. Because there's some nights where I want to go out and get on stage, and then I'll check it out. Not all nights, but then I'll, I'll check it out sometimes because I'm like, nope, I can feel the stage fright coming tonight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry. Okay, so my name's Alex. I live in uh, uh, Phoenix, Arizona. Um, I'm doing stand-up comedy. I want to do it. I want to get better. Um, even if it's not going to be my career, and I'm just going to end up running a business or whatever, I like it's something I would still want to do on the side, like the hobby for me, like the way people play video games. Like my dream isn't to be a stand-up comedian. My dream is to own a comedy club. And also tips for that, like, because obviously you want a comedy <laughs> club to treat comedians well and be able to pick good comedians so that you have a good club because a good club is a good club with good comedians. And or at, at least that's what I think. I don't know. Um, like, like imagine the comedy store, but more like the comedy seller in terms of looks. Yeah. Except it's not in New York. Right. Except better is what I'm trying to do. So you can see how I might need a Got little it. help. Um, yeah. Oh, okay. That's all. Cool. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's okay. Thank you. <laughs> what am I doing? Okay. Bye bye. Thanks, man. Hey, way to, way to keep going. Holy shit. <laughs> That's the longest probably call we've ever gotten. That's that. Uh, was, oh man, what a that yeah what a kid. Oh so young, a Alex. Alex, oh so young. I, I will just say that yeah. I don't know any comic um, who's really kind of done comedy on any levels of, uh, of success who's ever had stage fright. So just probably not gonna. Yeah, probably I would give up, out. man. It's never happened. Yeah, I've I've never been nervous. I've never sh shaken. I've never thought I should run away from the comedy club. You know, you know. 
I could get on stage at Radio City Music Hall and go to sleep on on that shit. I'd say right. Effects. I just not, <laughs> never. <laughs> yeah, dude. It, well, it's, everybody it's, gets yeah. Everybody gets it. I still if it's a big enough room, I still get it. But like it's yeah. It, yeah. I don't remember that feeling. I remember that feeling as a kid. First time I do plays mm -hmm. and stuff. I was lucky enough to be doing other live stuff before I ever did stand up. So when I did stand up. Yeah. I I was so in love with the freedom of not having to do some lines and memorize lines and just talk about whatever I wanted. I was like, Oh my God, this is like, yeah, I, I probably how people feel when they switch, when they, you know, like co long time coffee drinkers when they try cocaine to, for one of another. <laughs> and now, right. Woo! It, yeah. <laughs> I've been needed this stuff all along. <laughs> I love the eighties. Um, but it, it, yeah, it, it, it's it, dude, it's so natural. And I think, you, mm -hmm. if, you, if you do get the the shakes like that that's when you should go because yes uh, uh you, you just kind of have to work them away and, and not let them kind of get to you too much and i mean i think that's why that's why sometimes people hold on to the to the mic stand it's all right or, or yeah. lean on the stool sit down sit on the stool mark maron does yeah. it doesn't matter yeah so, I've, yeah. I've never, I've never gotten over that. I've never, like, I still, it just hits, you know, from time to time, but no matter how long I've done it yep. and now over like, you know, 20 years, a little bit, it's like, I still get every once in a while out of nowhere, I will get insanely nervous and anxious sure. for a show. Yeah. And uh, I, I heard somebody told me once that it's a, a sign that you care and that it's a good thing. It's like, mm -hmm. um, you know, get, getting amped up, your body's excited. Uh, you're, you're worried is a good thing because you're, you care so much, you want it to go well. So that's maybe kind of embrace it mm -hmm. while simultaneously. Um, God, this is from this book I love called Big Magic. Uh, Elizabeth Gilbert, she wrote this great book on the creative process. Okay. And she's like, basically, basically like approach it. And I think this, she was talking about writing, but I think this applies for standard performance. This weird duality, the simultaneously where you have to treat it like it's the most important thing you've ever done that anyone's ever done. It's the you know most important thing ever while also simultaneously not being important at all in the big scheme of things. And so for like a show, if you can, you know, when you're feeling these nerves, Alex, it's like, just remember that not in a bad way, but at the end of the day, it doesn't actually matter if you yeah. don't do well that one show. Yeah. Like in the big scheme of like, no one's going to like, you know, like we were talking earlier about my paranoia, about like, oh, now they're going to hate me. It's like, they're going to leave that show. They're, they're not going to, they're not going to care that you bombed. They're not going to, they're not going to hate you. They're not going to want to track you down later. Be like, there's that guy who sucks. I, he wasted my life. Like that's not going to yeah. happen. So don't put that no, pressure yeah, on yourself. Doing a short set. The thing I find is it, the, the, yeah. the great thing about comedy is you just, you don't really remember the people who bombed and, and, right. it's, and it's just cause your, your brain's kind of like, well, that was, that was an awkward thing. Yeah. I'd rather forget. But you, the thing right. that sticks out is like, oh my God, that one joke by that one person was so great. And you aim for that, but it's not a fucking either or. It's not a, yep. you either do well or people just hate your guts and or laugh, yep. at, laugh at you in the car. What a right. jerk. Right. Like, and remember that everybody bombs. Everybody yeah. bombs. Like the, the right. comics that you love and admire, they bomb. I promise you they bomb. I, I they bomb. One of the best bomb sets I ever saw was just, just for my own insecure ego was I opened up for Brian Regan for a little while on some shows. Oh, yeah. He is the coolest guy. He is so yeah. funny. He's such a great best. guy best. and such a good comic. And, and, and I, we were in Seattle and he was at, I think it was like the Moore theater, some like 2000, 3000 seat theater, yeah. you know, standing ovation. He murders. Of course he does. He, he kills. Then we go to the Seattle, the comedy underground. And it was yeah, like yeah. A, a, a late night show. And it was, I don't know, 50, 75 drunken, tired people scattered around that fucking sh shitty basement. And and he and he does a guest set and eats a dick for yep. seven minutes doing the same thing that just got him a standing ovation. And I'm like, that's comedy. That's stand up. And that's so, you know, for Alex, for Alex, you know, it's like, yeah, man, you're going to bomb. And yeah. so has every other comic. And it's OK. Yeah. And uh, finally, you you don't believe me now, but you don't want to own a comedy club. You don't. <laughs> you know? it's, I, I, know, I know people that do. It is a hard fucking road, dude. And uh, anyway, yeah. you know, 
uh, it's look it, it can be done but i think you need to intern with some of these guys and by intern just hang out stay out of their way and uh right watch if, if they'll let you you know if you're old enough to be around uh like le uh, legally you're old enough to be in places that sell alcohol and you can just hang out yeah you know and they'll let you back into the the, the room with the, the the stacks of figures and how much money you owe and a, a spreadsheet of yep. staff and to say nothing of offers to comedians that might or right. might not get in and i mean once once i found out how much some comedians how much most comedians make okay sure yeah um sure uh, which is not insane, but how much some make, even at your yeah. just whatever clubs. Yeah. Oh, holy shit. I had a friend who tried right. to be a booker for a while and he was like, hey, do you think so-and-so would, I won't say who it was, but he's a friend sure. of mine, would come and I'm like, well, he's going to want, and I told him how much and he went, oh, fuck you. And I was like, <laughs> I, you don't really know the business, man. I don't know what to yeah. tell you. You're out there in Cleveland and I love you, but... You know, right. uh, uh, and now, not that that matters, you know, there are, there are people who tour and make as much oh, money sure, as yeah. anybody and, and they live in Cleveland. But like yeah. that that said, I probably wouldn't have known how much those guys who might yeah. or might not live in Cleveland that are on the road make if I hadn't yeah. been in LA and New York and Chicago, you know, so. And, and if you're running a comedy club, I look like, like all the comedy egos you have to deal with. That's one thing. But really what you're doing is selling chicken tenders and nachos yep. and, drinks. and drinks and dealing and dealing with um, a const, constant turnover amongst yep. the wait staff and the bar staff. It's like, you know, loving comedy is such a small piece of that puzzle. And honestly, like there, a lot of the club owners that I've met that are pretty successful at keeping clubs alive for a long time don't seem to really give a shit about comedy they're good with numbers they, good. They, they know what their audience likes and they're good with the nuts and bolts of business administration and they have their favorites but at the same time yeah. they'll they'll they will book that youtuber that gets asses in seats oh yeah and they should and they should right? you know keep their so. business like you know the, the one club if you ever wanted to go alex i think Keith Stubbs, who runs Wise Guys in Salt Lake City, does oh, yeah. such a phenomenal job. Yeah, he's and he's great. somebody who was a really funny comic. Yeah. Uh, I don't, I, I say was, because I just don't know if he's still doing corporate shows, but just a funny dude. Yeah. Loves stand up, was good at stand up, and treats comics well, treats his staff well, and has been very successful in a tough market. Uh, yeah. It was tough for him to, to initially build a stand up scene there. So he, I mean, he's he the guy. It. He made that scene there, you know? Yep, he sure did. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh man, I gotta get back. I, lo I love those wise guys clubs. So oh, me too. Um, me too. I love I love seeing a good. Speaking of like like a good family guy, Keith is a great family yeah, man yeah. and just as just uh, he's I got a lot of respect for him. Yeah, absolutely. All right, dude. Well, I uh, hope that helps. And uh, next time, you don't need to um, uh, do a, an audio book when you call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, word economy. One oh, thing for stand up. Word uh, economy. Word economy. But, yeah. <laughs> but best to you, man. Good luck. This episode is brought to you by Clorox Compostable Cleaning Wipes. You want a clean house and a clean planet. And when you use Clorox Compostable Cleaning Wipes, you get the best of both worlds by helping reduce the amount of waste sent to landfill. These wipes are made with plant-based cloth, so you can compost them at your local municipal center or even at home. Best of all, they clean without harsh chemicals and fumes, making them easy to use just about anywhere in your home. It's really that simple. They wipe up dirt, then compost back into dirt. Learn more at Clorox.com. Composting may take several months depending on temperature and moisture. Use as directed. This episode is brought to you by Beyond Meat. The phrase plant-based meat can be confusing. So let's break it down. What does plant-based mean? It means all the key ingredients come from plants. Beyond Meat's plant-based food is full of protein, has no GMOs, and the least confusing part? It tastes great. It's even more delicious now with the newest Beyond Burger. It's meaty, it's juicy, and with summer just around the corner, it's the perfect time to try it. Go Beyond by heading to beyondmeat.com slash podcast for a $2 coupon off your next purchase. This episode is brought to you by PayPal. 
Ah, uh, online. It's where PayPal was born. But it's not all dancing cats and double rainbows in cyberspace. I mean, one minute you're trying to outbid Soup Boy 99 on some antique spoons. Next thing, your bank account is nothing but tumbleweeds. But now, PayPal has ventured out into the real world with non-dancing cats and actual rainbows, ready to help you start taking payments in person. It's a safe and easy way to get paid. Just generate your unique QR code in the PayPal app for customers to scan and start accepting PayPal in person today. Learn more at paypal.com slash us slash get QR code. All right, caller number two. Hi, Matt. My name's Carly. I'm from upstate New York, and uh, this is not the reason I'm calling you, but I think I just heard a bunch of bats screeching. I love bats. They're cool, but um, I'm asking advice because I'm bi, and uh, I'm 29 years old. I'm a woman. I'm married to a man. Been with him for 10 years, and uh, just came out as bi to him and my mom and one other person and part of me wants to like come out to everyone but the other part of me is like don't because you're married to a man and I don't know anyway don't know why I called you have a great day <laughs> bye <laughs> wow <laughs> thanks Carly that's so cool uh congratulations on coming out and um yeah. you know I mean you definitely uh you're talking to the the right people two straight <laughs> um, <laughs> no, you know, i no i i appreciate you but it's it's i i will i will say this i'll just real quick say it 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 is up to you who you want to tell i don't think there's a yeah. should um i i think it's i i think it, it's you know, the, 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 there, there might be people who say you should tell as many people as possible for the sake of the community. But I do think that I think they would agree it comes down to your your level of comfort. So, yeah, right now you told your mom. That's the biggest thing. Told your husband. Mm -hmm. That's the mm -hmm. second biggest thing. And then, you know, um, go from there. Go from there. Right. What do you what do you what do you think, dude? I, I think, yeah, I agree with like, like, you know, you get to choose who to tell. And as far as, I mean, there's going to be, I would, I would imagine, you know, marital implications. If you're coming out as bi 10 years into a relationship, mm -hmm. you may want to experience things that your, you know, male partner literally mm -hmm. cannot provide for you because you're, you know, attracted to multiple, you well, know. And I, yeah. I also think it, you know, it's maybe it's, she, she might feel a little guilty because he never oh, knew. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Right. Kind right. And so, yeah, just, but you know, I, I, that's between them. She didn't yeah, say exactly. about that. So, you know, maybe true, he, true, true. But maybe yeah, he, just, he just grunted out. and was like, can I change the channel, you know, and watch this other thing, you know, like, <laughs> right. you know, are, do we, are, do, are there any more <laughs> French fries? You know, whatever. But like, <laughs> I, I think about with things like this, if you're worried about, you know, judgment or whatever, I mean, it, um, those are people, if it's me, uh, you know, projecting here, if I'm coming out, and this is who I am. And I am, you know, so proud of myself for finally, you know, uh, maybe realizing this or announcing yeah. it or whatever. Anybody who's going to be upset by that, truly upset, like if you were to tell them, is that somebody you really want in your life? You know, if they're so, you know, bigoted or ignorant in some ways, you know, and, and also understand that, you know, they might go away for a while, but they might come back later as they evolve. And, um, you know, and, and then and then if there is any kind of relationship implications, again, possibly projecting, I always think about like we're told that things have to be a certain way, you know, in our culture, whatever. But, uh -huh. but it's all made up. We're, we make all right. of this up. Yeah. All of our relationships, our currency, everything is we're just fucking monkeys making up all these rules. Totally. And you get to make up your own rules, you uh -huh. know, and you get to you get to have the relationship between you and your husband. If you guys come up with something that, that you know. Uh, works for you differently down the road. Great. If you don't, if you're cool with the way it is right now, but you just wanted to know that you're attracted, but don't want to act on it. Cool. Like there's just, there's so many different ways you can go in life. And, uh, and at the end of the day, if like in the, in a relationship, if you and your partner are good with it, that's really all that matters. You yeah. know, if you, yeah. And you, mm -hmm. and you'll, and you'll, and if you weed out some people, you'll replace them with better people. You'll replace yeah. them with people who accept you like, like they should. Yeah, I mean, if you if you want to get brave, tell some people you think won't be okay with it. <laughs> you know, but yeah, like, 
It's really up to you. It's really whatever you want to do. It's it's tell no one, tell everyone. Tell, and, tell and what only, a weird yeah. Only the mailman. Whatever. You know. Yeah, the, whatever. And what a weird thing for people to get upset about. Like how strange in our culture that someone should even have to uh worry over yeah. letting other people know that they're bi or having that come out in some way. It's like I've it's such an odd thing for anyone to get mad at. You know, it's like, how dare your you know sexual organs start to get tingly by the right. sight of something that affects my life in no way whatsoever it's just or, yeah even being like i don't like your preference like right. what the, then why would i what? why would i care exactly you deal with that you deal with that that's not for me to deal with that's for oh. you to deal with about and it's sadly about me but like i, I don't right. know what i can tell you yeah i'm, I'm not going to change to make you feel better sorry right yeah so, tell tell anyone you want and if they uh, and if they don't like it then Fuck them. Fuck them. Uh, all right. Ready for our final call? Yeah. All right. Here we go. Third call. Last call. Uh, hit it. Matt, Dan, my name's Adam. I'm from Indiana. And my question is, with COVID cases decreasing and summer starting to warm up uh, and more social events coming back, what do you think the odds are that you, uh, Matt, will defend your title as shovel fighting champion? Thanks. <laughs> Have a great day. <laughs> I had a shovel a long time ago, man. I'm not going back. It's not. It's a young man's game. <laughs> Don't you understand? I was I was in my my mid thirties. Such a young man. Um, <laughs> That's funny, dude. Thank you. So I, lo I love ones awesome. like that to just catch me completely off guard. Do yeah. You, well, let's get into this. Do you get people that reference like really old bits of yours or oh, specific yeah. bits of yours like in, in public? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, okay. well, now I get it. From